Elden Ring is surprisingly light on shouting teenagers, which might explain why I haven't been back to it since I streamed it two weekends ago, the highlights of which are in this video. Because I've been so heavily entrenched in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I could be added to a register of historic places. But before everything that happened in Elden Ring is replaced by the mechanics for chain attacks, let's review. We're back in the Academy of Raya Lucaria, which I've been pronouncing Raya, but I think is said in-game as Raya. Raya Lucaria. So I'm going to try to fix that in my brain. Wish me luck, I've been mispronouncing things for years now, and it's very hard to shift the tongue properly. What is that face you're making? Stop it, that is a normal turn of phrase used by normal people- I'm so disappointed in you. You had to make it weird. So my first trip inside, I got as far as here, the purple specter, and then ran away because I had enough runes to level up, I was out of healing items, and I was scared. We're less than an hour into a marathon Friday night stream, and I find that perhaps I built this fellow up more in my mind than he might have deserved. Bit of an anti-climax, really. Just past there, we find a sunspot of hearth and home, or whatever they're called, and then this, the Hall of Perpetual Death, where I brutally murder librarians by the twos and the threes, and then am brutally murdered by laser beams by the dozens. To be fair, sometimes I am instead murdered by a giant pot. Though, honestly, it's usually the laser beams. After nearly half an hour of battling through the hallway only to either die to the librarians or be killed instantly by what awaits, I try a new tack, which is the field-tested dishonored stealth approach, where I sneak past exactly one person and then run screaming to the end. And then I fight the Red Wolf of Radagon, which is incredible and amazing and absolutely wretched for slow melee combat because every two seconds this fire-breathing brick house of a dog is doing its best Simone Biles but a ballroom dancer bit. I do win though. I do win. Good dog. I only played The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind once, shortly after it originally came out on the PC. Despite primarily playing it as a trading simulator where I sold all of my goods at value to Creeper, I remember playing as an assassin who picked his targets based on whatever whims floated through my brain at the time, and upon completing the dark and dirty deed, took a memento of his targets. His pants. Nothing else. Just the pants. No idea why. This kind of bullshit is in my DNA, apparently. Jack in the what's in the box. That joke is never as funny the second time you hear it. You know, I thought Disney's Gargoyles came out a bit too early to really get into the whole breakdancing trend of the late 90s, but I've been wrong before. As I loop through the Academy, I find this long hallway where another tarnished waits at the end. And we have a nice little arcade game style showdown, trading blows and dodges. I've put more quarters in the machine so I get to advance, and inside here we have another one of those big balls of faces. I love them so much. This one's frozen solid, which probably means something, but I don't play this game to understand things, up to and including mechanics. And then I get stuck for a very long time. How do I proceed? Uh, 
I know, maybe it's that big elevator that led to the Mobius ghost. Instead of getting off, let's actually ride it all the way around. It drops me in a little crystal clearing with another of the nightmare toy boxes, and unfortunately, I'm not quite sharp enough to avoid being... To avoid being... To avoid... Um... Where the fuck am I? For the next 15 minutes, this is my life. Lives. Darting around the opening areas of the Volcano Manor, getting just far enough each time to meet an enemy I've never seen before and be killed by them. I can't teleport out until I reach a state of grace or whatever, and this late in the evening I'm having problems getting there. Well, finally. Let's not do that again. Because this time I'm going to beat it and... God damn it. God damn it. This wasn't even the way! Shortly after an asteroid lands and wipes out the human race, long after your children and their children's children have stripped our planet of its natural resources, I consider jumping over to the big ramp and running to the actual building itself. Unfortunately for me, this ramp is the site of Titan's Marble Madness level, and I have a bad time. I'm the greatest Elden Ring player in recorded history. Three hours in, I find the boss. Little Calver. I'll soon birth thee anew, a sweeting, fresh and pure. And it's an exciting boss fight. Renala here demonstrates how the ruling class abuses the power they grant to themselves as the authority, wielding her department's unpaid interns as shields against the people's uprising. Separated from her exploited labor, she offers no real demonstrable skill or talent whatsoever, and one stroke of a blade does more than any number of internal reshufflings could. Beloved, have no fear. I will hold thee. Patience. Ye will be countless born forever and ever. Upon my name is Rani the Witch. This rich Salimba shall not be disturbed by thee. Foul trespasser. Send word far and wide.
of the last queen of Caria, Renala of the Full Moon. And the majesty of the night she conjureth. And then she turns into a Lunar Primal, and, well, I don't really have any more analogies. I don't know why I didn't expect a second form, especially after the first wasn't particularly complicated or difficult, never mind my two deaths on it. Queen of the Full Moon Renala is far more frightening than Professor of the Comfy Couch Renala, and to my surprise, I actually manage it on my first try at this second stage. I have earned this degree. <laughs>